In this segment, we're going to be assembling a PC from scratch. Now, at this point, we've already put together the motherboard. That is, we've integrated the processor onto the motherboard. We've installed the heat sink and installed the RAM. Now we're going to cover putting everything into the case, you know, assembling the system and firing it up. Now, for building this system, I'm using a PC power and cooling systems case and power supply. Now, PC Power and Cooling makes some of the best power supplies on the market, and this is uh, one of their best models ever. It's a 475-watt ATX power supply with power factor correction. This is really about the top-of-the-line power supply that you can purchase today. So we're going to use this as the core of our system. Now, like many cases, a case like this one from PC Power and Cooling includes uh, you know, extra accessories. You should get a bag of screws and other small parts that go with the case. Now, these are going to be used to install the motherboard, disk drives, and other components. Now, I've taken one side panel off. We're going to take the other panel off, the top panel, and the front panel in order to get this case ready for all the components. Now, one thing I like about the uh, PC power and cooling case is that they use these brass thumb screws to hold on all of the panels. Now, what this means is that we can open up the machine with no tools. So, for example, I'm going to take off this one side panel by undoing these brass thumb screws, top and bottom here. And then the side panel merely comes to the back and is, is removed this way. I'm going to set this down. Same for the top panel. I've got two screws here. Let me take off. And now the top panel can be slid to the rear and lifted up off the machine. Pop this up over the side here. And there we go. Okay, now we've got the entire chassis exposed. The power supply will load in from the top. The motherboard actually is going to be installed on a tray, which you can see on the inside here. And this tray we're going to take out from the, from the side here so we can actually install the motherboard without having to worry about the rest of the case being in our way. Now this case features some, some things that most cases will have, including a rear-mounted cooling fan, and an optional front-mounted fan. Now, for maximum cooling, you'd want to have both fans installed. But uh, in this case, we're just going to have the rear-mounted cooling fan. We also have the fan that's built into the CPU heatsink, and we're going to have, of course, the fans that are built into the power supply themselves. All right, now I'm going to take out the uh, tray that is used to support the motherboard. Now, to do that, I have some screws on the back here. I'm going to use my electric screwdriver and take these screws off. Okay, once I've removed the screws, this tray simply removes like so. Now, this is the tray we're going to mount the motherboard on. Let me move the power or the uh, chassis off to the side. Set this tray down. Now, you'll notice on the uh, motherboard tray, there are various brass standoffs. These are used to support the board. Now, there's various holes for additional standoffs. I've already inserted the standoffs that are necessary for this board. We're going to install this Intel 845 motherboard with the Pentium 4 processor. And it's going to be mounted like so on this tray. I'm just ensuring that all the screw holes line up with the various standoffs, and they do. So it looks like there are six uh, screws that are going to need to be inserted. Um, here's an extra standoff, for example. If this was a full-size ATX board, you might use this standoff as well as a support here that are provided with the mother or with the uh, chassis. In this case, since this is a micro ATX board, we're going to have some extra room here, but that's okay. And here are the screws that I'm going to use to uh, install the motherboard. These are Phillips screws. Now, normally you don't want to use Phillips screws when installing a motherboard, but in this case we're going to be careful so as not to walk the screwdriver head out of the socket. I'm going to start each of these. I'm 
Okay, now all six screws are installed in the motherboard, so the motherboard is firmly attached to the tray. I wanted to mention I also installed the AGP support bracket on the uh, AGP slot. This is the bracket which provides additional support so the AGP card isn't likely to walk out of the, so the slot, which can, of course, damage both the card and the board. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that the I.O. shield properly matches the uh, motherboard. This should have come with the motherboard. I'm just going to do a test fitting here, and we'll see how this uh, matches up. You can see how the shield is going to be surround all of the connectors on the board. And yes, this is the correct one. It does match the uh, connectors on this board. Now, this board has built-in sound. It has built-in USB. That is four ports on the back here. We have a serial port, parallel port, keyboard, and mouse. Now I'm going to set the uh, motherboard and the tray off to the side here. And we're going to install the I.O. shield into the case. Now the I.O. shield is going to go on the back here, like so. And it is simply pressed in place. Okay. Now, in some cases, you might get an I.O. shield with your uh, case, but you also should get it with the motherboard. You want to use the one that comes with the motherboard. It should snap in the case in place of, of whatever came with the chassis. Okay. Now, at this point, we can uh, install the uh, motherboard in the chassis. Being that this is the tray design, simply going to set it in place here. Make sure the connectors are lining up with the I.O. shield. Okay. And now I can begin to install the screws to secure the tray. At this point, we now have the motherboard installed in the case. Now we can begin installing some of the other components.